Hi guys, and welcome back to the Car Talk Spory. Today is the start of a brand new season. Obviously, if you haven't seen the last episode, I advise you to go and watch that. It will let you know what happened at the tail end of the season. Um, there was your chance. Now, you know, I'm probably spoiling it if you're carrying on watching on and you haven't already seen this, but we obviously narrowly missed out on the title, but we finished second, and that means Champions League football, potentially this season. I say potentially because, well, you'll find out soon. Um, I've got a lot to cover in today's episode. There's been a lot of uh, players coming in, a lot of players leaving the club, and um, I reckon we we're probably only going to get one game done. But I think how we're going to start today's episode is uh, let me introduce you to the new players and let's say goodbye to all the fellas leaving. First up, the Leavers. We wish them well. First up, a player leaving the club is Mertz Erdogan. Now, obviously, a lot of you who have been watching the Carl's Bory will remember that Mert Erdogan joined us a couple of seasons ago when we were in the uh, league below the one we're in now. He had a very good year for us um, that season, but he was a uh, surplus to requirements last year. He went out on loan for the last six months and uh, he got to the end of the season and his contract had run down and he's just not that good. Um, in regards to sort of like the players that we can sign now, the players that we had last season. So I'll let him go and we wish him well. Next up leaving the club is Tony Lindenhahn. You will see that he has gone to uh, Frankfurt and uh, I actually released him on a free. So he signed for them for nothing. Um, he didn't get a lot of football last year. I think he played a couple of games and uh, he, he, you know, he just... His ability tailed off a bit, he's 27 years old now, so he couldn't really get much better than, than he is, and uh, we just had better options last year, so I decided to release him so that uh, he could go and get some football, and we wish Tony Linden hard. Next, leaving the club is Johan Bokog Nano. Now, he went on um, on loan to Danispor last season, and, um, you know, he was a player that we bought in that I thought was going to really help and uh, he just wasn't very good when he played for us so I decided to loan him out from January onwards and they had an option uh, to buy him. They did so and um, yeah so Johan Bokkanano has gone to Abdanaspor. He's going to be playing in the same league as us because they just got promoted but we wish the lad well. Next leaving the club is Savas. Yes the right back. He was a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a a favoured personnel, like a bit of an icon at uh, Carl Sport. He had a really good season um, when he joined us a couple of years ago. Um, he had a couple of games last year, but not many. He sort of played in the cup for us. But obviously we brought in a couple of really good um, right backs. So I thought it was only fair to let him go. He's gone and joined uh, Eska Hispor for 20k. And uh, so it's a little bit of money in the bank, you know, because we signed him on a free when we did sign him. So, uh, yeah, I hope he has a good time there. I hope he has a really good season. I really enjoyed the work of Savas. Next, leaving the club is big Philip Weisinger. And um, I was a bit torn over this one, really, because he's 24 and he still had a little bit of growing to do. But I'm trying to build quite a determined squad and my centre-backs need to be really, really good. His heading and his marking is just not really up there. And... Uh, I don't know. I think as, as good as he was for us at times, he was a bit of a liability at others. And um, Brasilla come in with a bit of 100k and uh, it was too good to turn down really. Um, and yeah, so I accepted it. He's gone. He helped us, uh, he helped us win the cup and win the uh, PTT one league. But we wish him well. I think he's a really good player, but just not for us anymore. Now, this... This one hurt, but it's one of those, you get to a point where you just have to let players go. And uh, Burkai has left the building. Yeah, um, I loved this guy when he was playing for us, but he just wasn't good enough um, in the Super League. He couldn't grow anymore, he, he couldn't get any better. And he might have been consistent and you know he popped up with a goal, a very important goal during the course of the season. And, he did well when he was asked when we were asked him to come in and play, but unfortunately, just just not good enough. And yeah, it's a bit of a going one. We've had to let him go, but he's gone off for 140k. He's joined uh, Kasim Passa, and um, when you think we only signed him for 20k, that's a good amount of profit. 
on the player. But we really do wish Bukai all the best. Next up, leaving the club is Erkan Kass. Now he has gone to Rizzo Spore for 150k which is a massive loss on what we signed him for. But this guy was awful. He's probably my worst signing to date. He, he made eight appearances and scored one goal, but his average rating for us was like 6.67 or something. It was fucking shocking. And he just didn't get enough game time anyway because we had signed, um, you know, Foss who came in on loan and he did a really good job for us last year. And, um, yeah, it's just one of them things, really. So it's unfortunate that we've kind of had to pay out that sort of money and then sell him, like, a, literally a season later. But I thought I'd cash in while we could. And, uh, yeah, we just wish him the best of luck, really. Now, this is one of those... So, these, I don't know how to put this one. But, yeah, Ronnie's gone. Ronnie has left. And I love Rocket Ronnie. I really did. He played 50 times for us and scored 20 goals. Now, it just shows you, you know, what a player he was. Um, but, Rizzo Spore came in with an offer of 250k for Ronnie. And basically, I was looking at Ronnie last season and he made 12 starts and 16 sub appearances. He's not playing enough. And I don't want a player like Ronnie to be sitting on the bench doing nothing because he's a good player and he's a good guy and he's always going to be an icon of um, Carl Sport because of the stuff that he did for us. You know, he was there when we won the, the league, he was there when we won the cup. I love him. He was a really good player for us, but, you know, we've had to let him go. We really have had to just move him on because... The players we're trying to sign now have got to be a lot better than Ronnie because of the Champions League. So it's a bit of a sad one, but at the same time, I really enjoyed the work of Ronnie when he played for us and we can only thank him for everything he did at the club. Next guy going out is uh, Iker Hernandez. Now, Hernandez was destined for big things, we thought. And um, I signed him for 500k and I thought, yes, this is going to be a solid signing. Look at those stats, 15 finishing, 14 composure. The lad ended up playing 28 games and scoring 7 goals, which is not good enough. It's really, really not good enough. He just could not get used to my system. And um, I don't know. I just, I can't deal with that. We have to thank Hernandez for winning us the cup because... Without his goal, we wouldn't have lifted it. So we thank him for that, but we have moved the lad on. He's gone to um, Sheffield Wednesday in England for 700k. So we made a little bit of money on him, but looking at it now, we probably could have got a bit more out of him because he's worth a million quid. But I think that's just because of the reputation of the club that he's playing for. But yeah, Hernandez, he did okay last season. He wasn't the worst player in the world, but He's gone. He is no longer a Castle Sport player. Yassin has left the club on loan again. Um, he has gone out on loan to Konya Sport this year. He Basically, Yassin's 22 years of age. He's a player with potential, and if I can loan him out, I'm going to loan him out because I need him to be playing games because he's not going to get in the team at Castle Sport. So I'd rather he get on the getting got. Oh my God, muddled. I'd rather he got in the team somewhere else. So we hope that he has a good season out on loan. Bunyamin Balat has gone out on loan as well. He's another player, 21 years of age. He's got a bit of potential about him. So we've let him go out on loan. I just want these guys to get the game time, see if they can get any good. And uh, if they do, then we pull them into the team. So we hope he does well on loan as well. And Giorgio Rasulo has gone out on loan this season. I want him to get game time. The lad is tidy his stats are brilliant and he has a lot of potential about him so i would really like him to start getting some game time i thought it would be better to let him go out on loan he's uh, gone out on loan to eskasi <laughs> ah. yeah that team right guys so that's all of the outs covered i did tell you there was a lot to get through now all of those players have gone out obviously players have come in and this is the exciting part so let's get to it, shall we? Right, guys, I'm going to start with the loan signings. And the first guy to join us on loan is a man we all know very well. Yes, it's that man from right at the beginning of the Carl Spore. It's Tassin. 
he left us, if you remember rightly. Um, he moved to uh, Lille for not much money, like 400k. But the guy has turned into a bit of a beast. And um, believe it or not, he's only coming in on loan as a backup player. So it tells you a little bit about the uh, the other striker that I have signed. Very exciting. But yeah, Tassin, look at the guy. He's a beast. But yeah, he's coming in to play second fiddle. I was, uh, the thinking behind it was, we've got cup competition, we've got um, Champions League, potentially, and we've got the league to think about this year. And last year, I think we kind of threw it away because the players burned themselves out in the end. It was unfortunate, and I don't want that to happen again. So I want options. I want players that can score goals for us. And um, yeah, Tassin is definitely gonna be the sort of player that can do that. Another guy coming in on loan is Christoph Schuster. We are actually loaning him from uh, Manchester United. He's coming in as a backup slash rotational player. Um, he's a centre back. It's an area that we needed um, to sort out. Now, the one thing that I should have covered and that I haven't uh, is that the loan signings we signed last year, I tried to sign them all back on loan again. Um, Donnell Henry hasn't joined because they just basically wanted to try and sell him and then when I tried to buy him, he was just way too much in wages for the quality of the player that he is. Uh, Fosu hasn't signed either because Reading are going to give him a go in their team, which is good to hear, I think. And Castellano hasn't joined either for the same reason Atalanta want to give him a go. We have signed players, don't worry, we will get to that. But I just thought I should let you know this, why we are looking at the signing. So yeah, like I say, Christoph Schuster is coming in. If I just highlight his stats, you will see he's a very good player. Uh, Good, very good stats across the board. I think he'll probably play quite a bit in the league, to be honest with you. Um, the only thing that I, I don't like about him is that he's not very quick, but we can get around that with the tactics, so it's not to worry. So welcome this young lad to the club. Right, guys, a, another loan sign-in. This is Temu Bakayoko. He is coming in on loan from AS Monaco, and... Uh, I just needed another really solid uh, sort of ball winning midfielder because Merkan can't do it all and Merkan's sort of um, ability has, has tailed off a little bit. He's still a really good player but it has tailed off ever so slightly and uh, yeah I just thought this guy looked really good, 24 years of age, a good loan signing, he's not costing us any money in wages which is brilliant and um, I'm very very happy with this signing. If you look at his stats they're incredible. Um, and I think he'll be able to come in and do a job whenever we ask him. Next up, coming in on loan, is Mario Pasalic. Now, he's a 23-year-old Croatian from Chelsea. The good thing about this signing was that I actually was going to buy him. But I don't know what sort of player he is. So I've loaned him, and at the end of the season, if he's any good, we can potentially buy him for £2 million. Now, he's gonna play box-to-box -box midfield. If I just highlight this for you, two million quid buys you that. And if you look at all them stats, they're all above 10. And some of them are quite a bit above 10. Like his passing is very good. Long shots are very good. Determination is very good. Uh, off the ball, work rate, strength. You know, it's all really, really solid. And that's the sort of player that we want. Now, he is no Castellano. Let's not kid ourselves, Castellano was a special player, but he's coming in to replace Castellano. Hopefully, he can come in and do a really, really good job for us. Um, I really like this signing because it's gonna, it's poten he's got the potential to turn into a full-time player for us. And he's obviously, his current and potential ability are very good and he's only 23, so it's a young signing. And two million pounds for a player like that is nothing. So, let's hope he has a good season and then we'll sign him up at the end if he does. Next up, coming in to the club, is Rolando Arons. Now, Rolando Arons is coming in as a direct replacement uh, for Fosu, basically. Fosu, obviously, is not signing up again this year because his club had given him a go. But I see Rolando Arons on the uh, loan list and I thought, yes, this boy looks good. I like the look of him. Uh, we just, I'm just going to highlight this again. I really should do that before I you know, talk, start talking about him. But you will see pace and acceleration to burn. The only thing that lets him down is his work rate. But hopefully, this won't be too much of an issue for us. And... Uh, 
I'm sure the uh, Eager Beavers and all the, the ones that have got a bit of battle will notice that he has played a couple of games and uh, it was a bit tidy, is not he? Right, guys, now, we are now over with the loan signings. We're on to the full-timers. Now, David Kinsombi is someone I've actually been keeping an eye on for a very long time. I actually tried to sign this lad way back when we first started the game. And back then, he was available for sweet FA. But I've had to pay... Uh, about 500k for him I believe he's a very solid centre back and the one area I needed to work on as I say this I don't like the stats again yeah the one area I needed to work on was centre back and I think this guy is solid 22 years of age still got a little bit of a room to grow he's a four and a half star player with four and a half star potential but obviously in the next few years he can still grow a little bit i'd like to get his decision making up a little and his heading i'd like to get that a bit better but marking and tackling a 15 that's a solid player that's the sort of thing we need to be looking for in a center back now and if you look at the positions this boy can play as well it is mad he can play both fullback positions he can play defensive mid he can play center mid he can even play out on the bloody wings if he's needed which all right he's not trained there and he's not that good there but it's mad how many positions he can play i like that utility players are something that every club needs right guys next up joining the club is mete selik he is a turkish left back and we've uh, brought him in from stuttgart for 700k now this is one of those signings where it's a case of we have omer playing left back but we really did need someone as a backup and um, this guy has come in and he is solid as a rock and uh, as much as he is going to play back up he has the potential to surpass Omer so it's one of those it's a win-win because the older Omer gets then you know potentially you are going to have to look for a replacement eventually and we may have just done that 21 years of age current ability of two and a half stars potential ability of three potentially four and um, yeah just look at the lad he is solid for what we need in that position very happy with his signing it's not expensive you know the wages are not too big either but what a signing that is welcome him to the club next up joining the club is Gaston uh, Fernandez he's a 19 year old Portuguese right winger and um, he has come into the club for uh, 550k I think might be might be a bit more I completely forgot how much we paid for him but um, yeah I think it's a solid signing a right winger and uh, this is another one of those situations where Ishmael's staying with us he's not going anywhere but this guy's better than Ishmael and the way I look at stuff like this is if you can potentially sign a player that's better than what you've already got and um, you can sign them for not a lot of money you should do it because you've got to, you're forever you know improving the team and because we went so close to winning the league last year I wanted to have really improve because I think if we could nearly win it with a team we had last year imagine what we could do if we had a really good team so um, yeah I really like the look at this of this lad it's coming for not a lot of money from Benfica and uh, you know three and a half current ability but potentially four five star potential so yeah he's gonna play a lot of football this season what player welcome to the club next up we have Selkuk Alibaz and uh, he's a 28 year old winger and he's coming in from uh, Ozmanlaspor he's joining us for 700k and I noticed he had one hell of a season for us from Ozmanlaspor last year and I was sort of keeping an eye on him and um, he's a left winger and uh, so basically, it's a bit like what I was just saying um, with the uh, Fernandez signing. He's better than what we've got there. And we, to be honest, we only had players on loan in the left wing position last year. So here he is. Welcome him because that is a hell of a player. You know, 14 crossing, 13 dribbling, 15 corners, 16 free kick taking. They're all stats I love. And you will notice all these players I'm signing are quite determined players as well, quite pacey and they've got a lot of fitness about them. So that's that's what we need this year. I like the, I like this signing a lot and I like the fact we didn't pay a lot of money for him. Right guys, now this guy, Korai Gunter, has come in from Galatasaray 
And this is a big signing because he's a solid centre back. Um, so you can imagine him and um, David Kasampas are going to be a hell of a centre back partnership, hopefully. He's 24 years old, he's still got a little bit of time to grow, probably not too much time, but you will notice this lad is on 16 grand a week, which is huge wages for us. Um, it's mad wages when you actually think about it, and uh, yeah, he cost three and a half million quid. <clears throat> wow, big signing. He's actually uh, Carl Spohr's record signing now, but <laughs> it had to be done. He, um, we needed really good players, and you have to pay big money for the good players, and uh, that's exactly what I did with this guy. Welcome him to the club. I hope that. Uh, he can do a job for us because if you look at his career achievements, the boy's a winner. The boy is a winner. He has won it all in Turkey. Unless so he can win it all with us again. And the last signing is Jose Fernandez. He is an Argentine striker. We've bought him from Banfield. Now, this is a brilliant one because look at the boy's stats. He's 19 years old for fuck's sake and he's got 17 finishing 14 composure 17 anticipation good acceleration good natural fitness the only thing that lets him down is his passing but he won't need to pass it too much we just need him to put it in the back of the net now he's coming for an initial two million pounds but with add-ons this can go up to four million but when you look at the player and you know his current ability is four stars and potential ability four potentially five stars um, this is a solid signing, good determination, good decision making, like everything that you want in a really good striker. And if you look at the stats, you will notice that he's played a couple of games already and scored a couple of goals. So that is what I need from a striker. And that is why I went and spent some money on one. Had to be done, needed a solid striker. And I'm hoping that Jose Fernandez can become the next legend of Cartel Sport. Right guys, so that is all of the transfers covered. Now, let's head over to the fixtures. Let me show you what's been going on since we last met. I hope you like the look of all those signings. Right guys, so here we are. And you will notice that we have played a few games. Now, with the Champions League, because we didn't finish first, we've had to qualify. So that whole fucking it all up at the end of the season has really, really hurt us because we're not going in as a seeded team for a start. And secondly, we've got to beat some massive teams to even try to get to the group stage. I, When I drew the first team, I thought I'm just going to play this game and I'm just going to try and get through it. And if I do, then the next couple of legs I will cover. So... What happened in the first, uh, basically it was Champions League, best place qualifying, leg one, we lost 2-1 to Olympiacos. Now, Olympiacos are uh, actually a really good team. I thought they were going to be a bit shit, but they were brilliant. We lost 2-1 uh, to Olympiacos in the first leg. Um, we actually went 1-0 up. We were we, with 10 men, because in the 38th minute, Philip Weisinger got sent off straight red. You know, it was, believe it or not, I think it was one of the last things he did for us before we sold him, which is a shame. But yeah, he got sent off. And then um, we kicked off in the second half and uh, Jose Fernandez popped up with his first goal for the club in the 48th minute. We were 1-0 up. And then um, then they just came back, really. And it was to be expected. We had 10 men and, you know, they're a strong team. Uh, Gonzalo Martinez got the first of his two goals in the 55th minute. And then he got a goal in the 76th. So, um, yeah, but we had an away goal. That's very important. But we had to go away uh, in the next leg and basically try and win to get through. So in the second leg, we did win. We actually won 2-1. First minute, Jose Fernandez uh, pops up with a goal. Um, and then on the 30th minute, Maeda pops up with the equaliser for Olympiacos. Then in the 35th minute, um, Tassin popped up with a goal. And uh, yeah, it was all looking good. We just needed another goal, but it didn't come. It went all the way to extra time, all the way to penalties. And we actually ended up winning this on penalties 7-6. It was awful. And to be honest, I wish I had like recorded it for you guys because it was a hell of a game. 
but it's you know it's just one of those things and uh but yeah we we managed to get through we then had a friendly against Bournemouth, who are a very good team, and we run out one nil winners in that. I was really happy. And then you will see the draw was made, and for us to get to the group stages, we've got to beat Porto. Now, this is this is gonna be really hard, and I'm gonna put it out there for you now, in case some of you are gonna be really disappointed. I'm telling myself this so that I don't get the ump, but we're probably not going to get past Porto. Porto are an unbelievable team on here. Like, honestly, some of the players they've got are no joke. They are unreal. We're going to have to play the best football we've ever played in our life to get past them. Now, the first leg I'm going to cover in today's episode, that's all I am going to play today, though, because obviously I've done a lot of talking about the transfers and still got a few things I need to cover with you guys. So yeah, we're going to play the first leg very shortly. Um, and then you will notice as well, coming up, we have a Super Cup. So it's like a Turkish Super Cup and we've got to play Fenerbahce. So hopefully we can beat those mugs and win that cup. And then the season kicks off with Kayserispor. And uh, yeah, we I can't wait for the season to kick off. It's going to be a brilliant one this year. Now, I have to say that if we don't get past Porto, we get thrown in the group stages of the Europa League. So whatever happens this year, we have European football. So that is good stuff. Now, before we crack on with that Porto game, let's head over to the competitions. Let me show you what's going on, and um, then we'll crack on with today. Right, guys, here we are, competition screen, and uh, yeah, here we are, basically. The board want to top our finish in the league this year. Um... Believe it or not, we got a second place last year. The media are still only predicting 10th place finish. It's mad. Like, they just don't... No one fancies us. No one fancies us to do anything. Pretty mental, if you ask me. But yeah, and uh, you ready for Champions League? Board expectation was to reach the playoff, which we have done. So we've met that expectation. Um, as far as the cup is concerned, the board expects us to reach the quarterfinals, which I think is doable. Definitely, definitely doable. And uh, in the Super Cup, just don't be out of class, basically. Don't get bad, but they're not expecting us to win it. There you go. That's the competitions. Everything has been covered. Like I said, it's been a very busy summer for Cartel Sport. Hopefully, this season is going to be a good one. Now, without further ado, let's crack on and play the first leg against Porto. Right, guys, here we are. Cartel Sport versus Porto. We are at home in the first leg. Now, um, this is a very unfamiliar team to everyone, but the team we are going with in today's game is Ennis Ingol, Bajrami, and Salik at fullback. We're going to go with Kinsombi and Gunter at um, centre back, Rashid, Bakayoko. Pasalic in the centre of midfield, Fernandez and Aaron's on the wings, and Fernandez up top. You will notice that Ishmael, Tassin, Merkan, Omer, you know, they're all on the bench. It's a really strong team now. I think I've built something really good. Let's hope we can get out there and get the win. Come on. Here we go, kicking off in the first half. Whoa, this is big. All right, it's a throw in. Salik into Bakayoko, back to Salik now, into Pasalic, into Rashid. Rashid's coming forward, but he goes back to Kinsombi. Bakayoko in to Rashid. Bakayoko on the ball, in to Pasalic. Come on, go round, oh, unlucky, but Bakayoko in to Rashid. Rashid driving forward, in to Fernandez. Fernandez, oh, he takes a shot, he's missed, oh, Rich rebounding everywhere, oh, and Fernandez misses the rebound. That was pinging about like a ping pong ball. So that's the first half, everyone. Um, we're not being outclassed, we're holding our own, and uh, yeah, we just need to get back out there, get out of Reckon half, it's kicking off. You know, a draw would be a really good result in this game. We've just got to keep going. Pasalik with the ball into Aaron's. Aaron's is running at his man. He's gone round him. Oh, he should not have shot. He should not have shot. He should have put the ball across the box. I hope that's not going to be what he's like all season. I'm I'm going to make my first change, everybody. Um, Hernandez can't really get in the game. 
Um, he's not been terrible, but I'm just going to bring him off. I'm going to bring Tassin on. We're going to freshen that up uh, up front. And, uh, yeah, that's all we're going to do for now. Porto, we have a throw-in. They're going to build from the back, probably. They are a very good team. You'll see some of the players have got. It's no joke. Right, because Sombi, I need you to be winning that. But we have the ball. It's winged, and it's a bit of a waste. It is a bit of a waste. Oh, and they're in behind. They're in behind... Tackle, oh yes, that's good from Bucky. No, 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 that's, that's one of those, that's awful. Kicked it against someone and it's gone in the fucking net. Oh, I'm going to make another change. I'm really pissed off with the goal and it's none of the players' fault. Just one of those stupid football manager things that happens. Um, I'm going to bring Aaron's off for Sel... Cuck. That's all I'm going to do for now. Uh, Porto coming at us now. Um, I don't want to concede another goal. I've gone attacking because we really do need to try and get a goal if we can in this game. But I think it's going to come and shoot us in the foot. And Bubakar, 2-0. The first goal ruined it for us. The second one, that's us probably out now. They've got two away goals. We've got to go to, we've got to, go to them and beat them 2-0. So, don't see that happening. Major Army with the ball. That's sloppy, really sloppy, good save from Ennis, and this is the end of the game now, Port are going to run out 2-0 winners, it's disappointing, our Champions League journey is probably going to be over before it's even begun, but I did tell you guys, Porto are a serious team, and um, it's one of those things, it doesn't help when we're not, when we can't just pass to each other. And there we have it, Porto to Cartelspore, nil. <laughs> Don't know what to say about that, to be honest. Right, guys, so there we have it. We lost 2-0 in the um, the first leg. And to be honest with you, we're probably not going to be able to go to Porto and turn over a 2-0 deficit. It's They're a really good team. I did, I did tell you guys that. I am gutted because the first goal was one of those bullshit things that happens in Football Manager and um, it just wouldn't happen in real life. Why would a player kick it against the back of someone else to set someone up? It just wouldn't fucking happen. It's stupid. It pissed me off a bit. And um, But yeah, so we're probably not going to be in the Champions League much longer. Um, but I'm not going to I'm not gonna play on um, because it wouldn't be fair because this is the start of a Champions League journey and you know stranger things have happened we might go to Porto in 3-0 probably not but we might you never know do you um, so in the next episode I think we will cover the Super Cup against Fenerbahce and the second leg against Porto um, yeah you know I think that's a good episode that's going to be a lot of fun to do as long as we don't get battered by both teams. But yeah, a loss in today's episode wasn't ideal. It is what it is, though. Right, we don't need to head over to the competitions today. But you know what's going on next episode. Let's look forward to that. Right, guys, there you have it. Another episode of the Carl Spory is a wrap. So... I hope you've enjoyed this little episode. Now it's something a little bit different because, you know, it's the start of a new season. We haven't played a lot of games, but you've had to be introduced to all of the new personnel at the club. It's exciting times for Carl Spore. There's money in the bank. There's world class players on the pitch. I know, unfortunately, we lost 2-0 to Porto, but the Champions League journey was never going to be easy. And I never said that the Carl Spore journey was going to be over in a few episodes, did I? Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure you're showing your boys some love, dropping a like on the video. If you're brand new to the channel, you've never been here before, make sure you're smashing the shit out of my subscribe button. Until next time, I've been Dan, you've been a legend. Peace out, my homies. <laughs>